I know that you haven't been in the industry like terribly long, but obviously no. you're a very smart person, organized person. Thank you. You seem to understand how to do things in a way that makes sense for you. Yeah. Even though you're only three years in, what would you have done differently maybe at the beginning? Or do you have advice for new girls? Yeah, I think you're, you learn so fast on the job because no one's telling you what to do. You are literally figuring it out on your own mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. One, I think that everyone's journey is different, so there isn't a good template for how to do things. But some of the things I think I did really well was I started an LLC and a business bank account right away. Mm -hmm. I feel like people don't realize that lo the logistics of making money as a contract employee is very complicated and you don't want to mess that up. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you were like me, I was making more money than I ever had right off the bat. Yeah. And you have to be very careful with that. Um, another one too, and it's a sticky area. We kind of talked about this is like, I knew that to get into the industry and do the kinds of shoots that I wanted to do right away, um, you know, I didn't want to do a lot of casting couch. I didn't want to do kind of low budget stuff. I, I needed an agent. I needed an agent to speak on my behalf and be like, listen, she's got her, her, her together. She can perform. She can, you know, somebody to kind of vouch for me. So I liked being with an agency right off the bat. But you have to be so careful about who you choose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's just no way of knowing. Yeah. So at the everybody end of the day, everybody seems so great. Before everybody seems so contract. great. And this is like across the board with like everything, yeah. right? And like the more yeah. business deals I've done um, over the years, like I'm pretty anal about contracts now. Mm -hmm. And I have like a very expensive Good. lawyer that looks at stuff. And I'm like, I nitpick about because yeah. I've been caught in a position mm -hmm. so many times where I'm like, well, I don't need to worry about this. These people are so great. Look how nice they are. Look what they're promising me. It's all going to be fine. And like, it's the weirdest shit happens mm -hmm. and like stuff goes upside down. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I wish I had been more picky about what was in my car. Exactly. Or had somebody on your side to advocate for you. Because yeah. like, I didn't even know what I was signing and what I was getting myself into and what was standard and what wasn't. You know, mm -hmm. like there's, when you're new, it's so easy to get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So having an agent or a business manager, somebody that you trust on your side is wonderful, but finding that person is really difficult. So yeah. at the end of the day, you are responsible for your future and your business and yourself. That's number one. Do not rely on anyone else. Use them to help you, but rely on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, can't trust anybody. No. You literally can't. You literally can't. And it's sad, but it's and, true. But it's, I think I look at it in like a good way is it's like, this is on you to be yeah. successful, right? Yeah. Like, it's not that I can't trust anyone, but don't don't rely on anyone's trust to get ahead. Yeah, You know, promises of like, oh, well, if you do this, we'll give you this scene, like that kind of stuff, you know? I remember one time, uh, and this is probably why you should have an agent, is um, I showed up on set. I had only, only ever shot girl, girl for this company. And then I go and shoot boy, girl. And I noticed they had like crossed out my rate and like filled in some of the paperwork for me. And I mentioned to the director, like, do you know my rate for this scene? He was like, oh, they handle that at corporate. They'll be fine, whatever. I get my check, it's $300 short. And I was like, what is this? And they were like, oh, that's the rate we pay for boy girl. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's not my rate. Why, yeah. like I need, and they were like, well, we would have never approved that rate. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I will not be working for you anymore. Yeah. And that's you something know? you definitely want to sort out beforehand because right. it's like you don't want to get to well, set. Well, I tried kind of. I tried. Of like, you know, I was like, what is this? And like, right. and I talked to them like, you know, this is incorrect, like whatever. And people in the industry have had different opinions on that. Like you should have fought harder. Well, there's a lot going on in my life at the time. $300 wasn't worth the fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that happens that type of situation, like the money situation has happened more to me on set than like anything else, mm. you know, in terms of like bad experiences and whatever. So was this before you had an agent or you did not have an agent at the time that this happened? I, that was when I was in between agents. Yeah. Right. So, so, which is also very confusing, right? Yeah. They don't know where to send the paperwork. They don't know if they should be talking to you. They don't, you know, and so it's just, yeah, you, you always have to be on top of it. Yeah, Something it's always good to way. get something in writing. A lot of times yeah. I will like, mm -hmm. if I have a meeting with somebody or a conversation with someone, I'll send them a follow-up email and I'll be like, okay, yep. so this is what was discussed. This is the rate, yeah. this is et cetera. Like, I love to over-communicate. Oh, me too. You know? Yeah. And even if I, even if somebody doesn't get back to me, I'll just send it again. Or, you know, yeah. it's like you can't take any of that personal. Yeah. Um, But it's interesting how there's a lot of ego at play. I feel like some people are either like young or don't come from a professional background. So a lot of things get lost in translation. Totally. You know, but you just have to keep doing what you do. 
yeah. in order to make your business successful. Yeah. I think what a lot of people don't realize about adult stars is that you're all small independent businesses yeah. and you're all essentially entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I think it surprises people that most stars don't have business agents. I mean, business managers. No. A lot of like celebrities do. Right. So they deal with all of that. Right. But like, yeah, you'll have your business manager, your agent, your assistant, your, your finance, accountants. your lawyer, yeah. Yeah. your PR. It's a yeah, whole we got nothing. People. It's nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I do. I do have assistants now, but yeah, it was. Yeah. Rough. No, it's no. it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I think that, that all the time for myself, often I'm like, God, I wish I had a manager because yeah. it's just like it's a lot for me. It and is. I have a lot going on, but also like make enough money to have, like pay a manager. That's the thing. So people are like, like, oh, be making so much. Yeah. And like all of a sudden it's like, I mean, yes and no from yeah. what I was making and whatever. I'm incredibly happy with what I have now. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not anything like celebrity money. Yeah. It's not anything like professional actor money. But, yeah. So yeah, you can't afford a whole team of people. And the problem is, is like you're generally not getting residuals on stuff. No, never. Right? So you're not making a movie and you're getting like money – down the road on anything it's a like long time sure you may be making a lot of money on your only fans but you have to continue to produce content mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. that so it's like it's that's never, hardly residual yeah. no it's exactly like, that's, that's it's never in too. there's no like passive in- there's almost like not no really. passive income coming not in. really that's really hard to mm-hmm. establish yeah 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 but that's i mean i like the challenges of this industry right you know right Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.